this is not the real deal. The real deal is, is still ahead. Yes, I think uh, July. Uh, July 16, yeah. that was the election day. I, many people um, thought, given the bad blood that uh, characterized the, the campaigns leading to the primary election, uh, that maybe there will be an upset or something. Yeah, as you have seen, I said I said it on Friday that Elisha, for example, will be a battleground because the governor, some of the governor's best supporters mm. are from there. And the person who stood up to say, look, Mr. Governor, we don't want you to come back, is also from there. So, oh, okay. so a point has to be made. And they were ready for it. The point has to be made. You can imagine in Elisha East where uh, when Rahul Farag Shola comes from, mm -hmm. there were some very strong supporters of the governor from there. And I'm not surprised that the governor won easily in the, in, uh, in, uh, the minister's uh, ward. Yeah. And it's the same pattern everywhere else. Where you go to Ikire and you find the finance minister is from there, or your maiden is from there, and some other heavyweights. Mm -hmm. How do you defeat the governor in a place like that? Or you go to Ife to say you want to defeat the governor when Omishore is his supporter. He has not lost any election in Ife since 1999. Mm -hmm. And he I remains strong. Not just that it, it has not won since 19, it has not yeah. lost. Yeah. It remains a factor in the politics of FIFA land. And everywhere the governor is going, you see Omisore sitting in front. He's sending a message that I'm behind this man. He is one of the reasons people are convinced that even the, uh, the, the next governorship election in that state will still be won by this man. Because the votes from Ife is usually significant. Okay. And in the past, the APC had struggled to do well in that area because of Omishore. Okay. Yes, even when Omishore contested for the governorship, the quantum of votes from that area was significant. 